Amen. And joy to the world. Happy Christmas, everyone. Well, it's nearly anyway. It's Christmas Eve. I always thought Eve was night time. But it's not, okay. And so we're going to have a good time today because, see, we're celebrating the goodness of God. Christmas Eve is the time of preparation. And I'm sure all the mums, how you been going with preparation? Doing good? Well, you notice my wife's not here today. It's not because of preparation. She even got out of that. She's just not well. So can you please pray for her? She will be back firing tomorrow because she's preaching, okay? So we're going to have a good time. But, you know, when we start into Christmas, I know that we've got a set path. See, if you've been in a family for a few years, I can be pretty sure of this. What you're doing for Christmas this year is much the same as you did last year. No? Oh, one's a couple of different, okay. Generally, we follow traditions, but we don't always know why those traditions are there. It's like this one. Why is this tradition around? How many candles did you read about in the Bible? Not too many. Well, they probably had it because they didn't have electric lights to turn on, but we've created traditions over time to say this is the way it's done. Well, I want to just sort of put a different slant on some of the things today and ask some questions. Really, what is the real meaning of Christmas? What are we all here for? What is it happening? And today, one of the things I want to look at is an area of rejection. How many people like to be rejected? It's a shocking feeling, isn't it? You know, when you have rejection, do you know really it hurts more than somebody punching you? It even hurts more than somebody stealing something from you. And you think, go, why? It's only words or it's only actions. They didn't really hurt you. But let me tell you, it really hurts. It goes deep. And I want to tell you this, that Jesus had some rejection. Some of us may even find rejection. There's one guy I'm spending a lot of time just talking to on the net at the moment, and uh, I feel for him. Every Christmas, his kids don't even phone him, let alone catch up with him. Rejection. It hurts so deep. But we don't realise that some ways, Christians are facing it. I couldn't help but see this article in the paper the other day. It says this, As today, there have been moves to discourage Christianity and any references there in the public state system. This is a Queensland paper. There's been a crackdown to try and stop junior evangelists trying to share Jesus with others. In fact, I love the title. I didn't put it in. The term came later. It says, we are happy for them to talk about Christmas, but they can't link it to Jesus. I thought that was interesting. Do you know, when you stop and think about it, from the day that Jesus showed up, he was rejected. I don't know whether you ever thought about this. See, when he was conceived, what happened? <sighs> People rejected Mary. His father rejected the thought of him being born. <laughs> in his own birthplace, he couldn't even find a hotel or a decent hospital to get born in. He goes into another area to grow up and he gets kicked out of Nazareth. His own people don't like him. He's kicked out of the temple. One of his disciples even turns on him. And then the very last, his heavenly father, turns away from him. When you stop and think about that, you think, boy, there's some incredible thing happened through the journey of Jesus that we would now say, what a great celebration Christmas is. But it took a lot of courage for Christ to actually stand for it. See, I actually call this today and say, Christians... Are we going to be courageous to really stand for Jesus this Christmas? Or are we just going to let it roll like it's rolled in the past? We're going to have a celebration. We're going to have lots of food. We're going to say nice things to people, to their face anyway, and just keep moving on? Or are we going to be bold enough? See, the truth is Jesus brought victory through rejection. We can today too. Many people like to stop Christianity. Why? Because it challenges their lifestyles. They don't want to be involved. Because, see, they see Christmas much more like this. Isn't that right? You go up to the shopping centre. Were there more people in the shopping centre today or yesterday than there are in all the churches in Cranbourne? There are, aren't they? Why? Because they've seen a different point of view about what Christmas is. They have replaced Christ with 
dollars, cents, merchandising, decorations, it goes on. Others have even gone further and they say, well, as long as we look the part, we blend into how it should be. We go to all these different places and all these different decorations. But let me tell you, that's not the true meaning of Christmas. Let me just go through a little passage that I thought this was very interesting. We all know that in Corinthians, there's a passage there about love. Can I just read these words to you? If I was to decorate my house perfectly with lovely painted bows, strands of twinkling lights and uh, shimmering glass balls, but if I do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. If I was to slave away in the kitchen, baking dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals and arranging beautiful ornated tables at the mealtime, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another cook. If I, so just make sure it's turned yet, if I worked in the soup kitchen, caroling the nursing home, giving all I had to the charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spurge and the swimming angels and crocheted flower, um, snowflakes, attend a myriad of holiday parties, singing choirs, cantata, and, but not focus on Christ, I've missed the point. See, love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the husband. Love is kind through hurried and tired days. Is that a bit right? Love doesn't envy another's house that has been coordinated with Christmas china and table linen. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of your way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoice in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break. Pearl necklaces will be lost. Golf clubs will rust. But giving the gift of Christ's love will endure. See, when we read things like that, it helps us to refocus. What is that Christmas all about? How important is it to see God in the midst of everything we do? But then there's another group of us, and I say us. What's Christmas all about? Turkey. Okay. That's got to say, that's one of the highlights of Christmas, isn't it? And in the midst of Christmas, with all the food, there's one product that is always so important, which is... Chocolate. Can you have Christmas without chocolate? Well, I saw this some years ago, and some of you have probably have seen this. I couldn't help but bring it up because, see, we need to see the true story of Christmas through chocolate. Can you see that? Can chocolate bring you the revelation of who Jesus is? Well, I want all the children to help me out with this, okay? Every time you see in a few seconds a chocolate bar flash up, I want you to yell out, what that chocolate bar is, okay? Let's see how we go. So it starts off here. Joseph and Mary travel to Bethlehem along a... Yeah, good stuff. You're getting it. They became tired on the journey and they needed a... Okay. And so Joseph decided it was time to stop for a... Okay. When they arrived at Bethlehem... The only place they could stay was a stable full of? <laughs> Where the baby Jesus was born. The night, sorry, that night in the field near Bethlehem, some shepherds were mining their sheep. It was so cold that the grass was? As they were watching their sheep, they were? kind of surprised by some of the angels told them to go to Bethlehem and see his newborn king. Meanwhile, in the east, there were three <laughs> or wise men who were studying the stars of the <laughs> and when they saw a huge star, they First thought, it might have been the planet. 
but it wasn't. They followed the star. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they entered into the uh, then sorry entered and presented their bounty of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That night, the three wise men had a in which God warned them that King Herod was up to his old. So they returned home without telling him about Jesus. You see, Christmas is more than Santa, reindeers and snow. It is more than having lots and lots of food to chomp on. We can get into such, uh, we can get into so much of a twirl trying to organise Christmas, we forget what is it really about. See, this Christmas, we need to take some time out to remember that best thing about Christmas is Jesus. Jesus. Come on, is that right? So, you know, the story of Jesus can be found anywhere, is that right? The question is, can the story of Jesus be found in your home? Can the story of Jesus be found in your life, in your communication? Too often we just allow things to roll and we forget it. As you heard before, we had the people up here presenting many of the scriptures out of Luke. And I just want to do a quick read through of out of Matthew so we've got a very clear picture. The birth of Jesus took place in this way. His mother Mary had been promised to Joseph in marriage. But before they were married, Mary realised that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was an honourable man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the marriage agreement with her secretly. Joseph had this in mind when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said to him, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, he saves, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this happened so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet came true. A virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That is the truth of Christmas. God had always planned for our salvation. God had always planned for our well-being. And through centuries, God had been working it out. Now, centuries since Jesus was on this earth, he's left some other people to carry on that same message. Guess who they are? That's us. And we've got it. Whether you read it through chocolate bars, whether you read it through scripture, whatever way you do it, we are the ones now carrying the message. See, I don't know whether you ever thought about it. If Jesus was to come today, what would he come like? How would he be? Well, we see back in the, old, in the Bible, it says that he came on a... Wasn't there a donkey involved that brought Jesus' mum to that place? How would it be? Some of you have seen this. I played this a few years ago. I thought this was good. If Jesus was going to be born in 2017 as a baby, let's have a look.
times change, but the message of Jesus does not. It doesn't matter what you do, how you decorate your home, any of those things. Let me tell you this. The message is still the same. Jesus Christ has come to this earth to save us. Until he comes again, he's left us with a message that we are to go and bring forth change to those around. So the question I always ask is, what are we doing here now? So we know the great thing is that Jesus has brought us salvation, so we've got a right to get to heaven. And everything I read about it, that's a good place. But we are left here for a reason, and the reason is simply that we are to do something about changing. But are we prepared? Was Mary prepared? Was Joseph prepared? You know, the reality, was Bethlehem prepared? Let's try this again. Are you prepared? Your wife, your husband prepared? Is your home prepared? Your town prepared? What about this? A church, are we prepared? Something like Jesus coming changed everything they knew at that time. Today, let me say, I believe we've got to be ready for change. Change is going to make a difference because the greatest question is, are we prepared for what God can do through his life now in us? See, as we go through, we need to ask these questions. What are we going to do to be prepared? One, we must have a clean heart. If we don't have a clean heart, then it's, we're not going to be really the ones on the top of the invite list to be part of the party. I saw that invite list going out by the email and say, we're going to create an event. Have we created an event? We call it church every week. How many have we actually invited? I know every time I turn on Facebook, there's another event to go to. You ever have that problem and just start ignoring them? Well, guess what? Some people have been ignoring the things of God for a while. But we need to be inviting them. It says, blessed are the pure heart, for they will... Let's try it again. The blessed are the pure heart, for they will... Who wants to see God? Who else do we want to be seeing God? Are there others in our family, others outside our network, in our workplaces, in our school, that don't have an understanding of who God is? Well, let me say this. They need a pure heart. How do they get a pure heart? Jesus Christ comes and makes it that way. The next thing we've got to see there is simply, we've got to arrange our priorities. Christmas, do you have to arrange your priorities? You've got to get things in order. What's the highest priority? The ham being cooked for Sunday or for the Christmas day? The presents being wrapped properly? The tree being established and lit up properly? Or is Jesus at the centre of everything we do? So we've got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things can be added. I don't know if you ever thought about this. How many things? All things. What's got to go first though? His kingdom. Everything that evolves to him, that grows to him, that is contained in his life, that is number one. And as a byproduct, he gives everything else back to us. We've got to see that so clearly. Number three there simply says we've got to receiving and giving of gifts. How many people like that? Yeah. Some of you do? I struggle with gifts. Look, you know, if you give it to me, I'll take it. But I sit there and go, now, am I supposed to give something back or not? Now, how do I say thank you? Do I get on my knee and kiss their arm or something? Or what do I do? And see, sometimes gifts have different impact on different people. But let me tell you one thing. God gave everything to us what is our response to him do we drop on our knee and kiss him how do we thank him do you know the simple thing about thanking him is we give it to somebody else yeah another little clip that I saw you know, I didn't have time to upload it I couldn't help but see this little clip and I thought it was just so interesting the guy was walking down the street and he was real grumpy and this girl spots it and so he gets picks up this piece of paper and draws something on this paper and hands it to him. And all of a sudden he opens up the paper and guess what he does? Smiles. Well, this guy walks down the road and sees someone trying to get into a doorway and he couldn't do it. So he runs over, opens the door and guess what he does then? He passes his paper, paper on to him. He goes up and he got looks in the paper and he smiles. And then a bit later his wife's rushing out because, you know, women are always late to get to work, is that right? Okay, and so she's rushing out, and so just before he ru he ru she runs out the door, she grab he grabs his piece of paper and slips it into her purse. She gets down to the bus stop, 
and sees this paper, opens it up, and guess what she does? Smiles. But guess what? Standing at the bus stop is another lady, and she's getting impatient because she just missed the last bus. And so guess what this first woman does? Slips a piece of paper to the next one. And guess what she does? Smiles. And then she takes that piece of paper and she gives it to her grandson, who's upset because he just opened the Christmas present and it broke. And he opens up the paper and he smiles. I looked at that and I thought for a minute, if we Christians just did that, how many lives would change? We've got to give gifts because the gift is this. To all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Could you get that picture? If you were giving that one thing, you know what was on that picture? I had to watch it right to the end to find out. You, if you, can't, you ready for this? You know what made them smile? Two dots and a little circle. A picture of someone smiling. How simple is it? And then I thought, how simple is it to share Jesus? How simple is it to let them know about the love of God? Just pass it on one by one by one. See, we've got to get to that point of giving our heart. We will never give anything unless our heart first is changed. My child, give your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. If we put God at the centre of everything we do, you know it's going to come out. Yeah, the interesting thing, you've ever noticed when you talk with people, after you talk to people for a few minutes, what can you normally find out about that person? Can you usually find out whether they're married, whether they've got a job, whether they've got a family? Why do those things come out? Because it's important. How many times did Jesus come out? Is Jesus important? Is he the one that is the center of everything? So often we get our eyes tied up on all those things which are family's good, what your career is good, all those things are good. But what's even better? Jesus. He's got to be the one that's there. See, if we declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? We'll just try it again. You will be? By believing, you receive God's approval. And by declaring your faith, you are saved. Scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be ashamed. Today, this is the greatest thing that we could ever declare to people. See, we tell the passage so clearly, Jesus rejected. Scripture goes on and says, see, I am sending Christ to be the carefully chosen, precious cornerstone of my church. And I will never disappoint those who trust in him. Scripture tells us, though, that he was rejected. He was pushed aside. But Jesus was taken to be the centre of everything. Today, church, we've got that privilege. This Christmas, let's keep Christ right at the centre. Because if we don't, we're going to find many people miss out. You've seen pictures like this before. God's whole purpose has been to bring people into his presence. But he has left us here to declare the message of Jesus. The only way into God's presence is to accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour of our lives. And today, this is what we have the greatest privilege to do. See, Christmas, people are used to hearing about the name Jesus. So let's use it. They're used to hearing about the term Christmas. Well, you take Christ out of Christmas, what do you got? Just got a mess, that's all. So we've got to keep Christ at the centre of all that we can do because if we don't, we don't realise how much people miss out. The question is this, do we accept it or do we reject it? Today, people have got to make that decision. We're going to have family that we're going to meet. They're going to have to make that decision. And I pray that we're going to see this opportunity, that we're going to see lives change as a result. Can I have the museums back, please? Because today I believe we can do something about changing the culture of who we are. The culture of what Cranbourne is or the town that you live in. Because God has raised us up to a time like this. You know, I don't know whether you've ever seen this hanging on our wall at home. It's a simple little box. What's inside it? Chocolate. The wording on the outside 
in case of emergency, break glass. Okay? Some people see that we need chocolate. Some see we need coffee. But let me tell you this. There is an emergency happening right now. And we've got to break the glass and let Jesus out. We've got to allow Jesus to be the centre of everything we do. So we're going to be heading into our celebrations tomorrow. Christmas has come. You can't stop it now. And we need to be ready for it. But there are some I know that are probably going to be struggling a bit. And if you need prayer today to overcome some of those areas, or even you know that you're going to be meeting with many people that don't know Jesus, then how about we just pray together and believe God's going to use Christmas Day for the purpose for what it's meant for. Christ, Jesus comes to save. Let's stand on our feet. We're going to close. I'm not sure what we've got. Middle road. There you go. And we're going to, if you want prayer, I want you to come out because I don't want us to enter into Christmas not knowing that God can do something powerfully in your life. Inside the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end